quite a lot of people are. How many of you guys are all diverse? Wow. <laughs> <laughs> Good question. <laughs> Andy only and Reina and Steven. Yeah. <laughs> Do you count snorkeling in, inside or not? Or no? Snorkeling, uh, snorkeling different. Uh. <laughs> different one. Later I show you and why. Then, because you can't see a lot of things. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, snorkeling for me like beginner, ma, okay lah. <laughs> I think it's uh it's different. Uh, later you'll see why lah, because it really opens yeah, yeah. up a huge whole new world lah. Yeah, underwater. Okay. I see hello. some messages. Hi, Saiful, Saiful dive. Hello. You know, like an hello, um, Tony. Hi, hi, hi Melanie. <laughs> hi. Yeah, hi, Mel hi Melanie. Hi. Hey Tony, hello. diving hi, uh. Man, diving uh. You must be. You must be. You must uh, ask questions uh. Good evening. <laughs> yeah, your subject matter Good tonight. Evening. Good evening, Tony. Good evening. Tea, uh. Hi, hi, Wilda, Hilda. Good evening. Hi, yeah. hi. Really, really, really. Yes, June. Hi, you want to snorkel? Uh? you are floating up there, uh? You know, you don't go down and see. It's not funny. Okay. Okay. Oh. <laughs> you say like that, I also say like me. You know, really, yeah, yeah, the oil I, too I much, to uh? You snorkel, uh, huh? that means that you are floating up there only. You hoo ha, hoo ha. You only smell people back up, all the bubbles only. You swallow. Okay, la, <laughs> I bring more bell. La. Uh, okay, la. happy. Ho, la. Okay, la, la. <laughs> happy. Ho, la. Okay, okay. Uh, thank you all for joining us tonight. Uh, we have uh, Melanie here, Melanie Hua, and she's going to share on us on uh, on um underwater photography yeah now melanie has a dive center that's over uh at a place that's very popular for photographers uh it's the the place that's next to a and w right yes it's uh yeah, it's called PJ. PJ, pg pumps <laughs> yeah. pg pump spot center so it's just opposite of mcop mall yeah. uh oh. the same yeah. role with the famous a and w lah, the yeah. driver oh. a and w melanie, yeah, yeah i know yeah. kelvin no yes. kevin which kevin the one yeah, doing the, the, the swimming class one. Kevin not uh, doing swimming class one. Uh. Yeah. Oh, you mean w. EJ? Yeah? Uh, EJ, yes. EJ, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. EJ, yeah, 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 yeah. So <laughs> he's our neighbor. Lah. Okay. How long have you there, Millie? Mili, Mili. So, huh, so today is actually our second year anniversary. Uh. Ngam Ngam today is actually our second year anniversary. Yeah. So, two years. Two years, yes, two oh, years okay. today. Yeah, barring oh. uh, you know, uh, one point five years of uh, COVID. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, so we we have been open for about two years, lah. Yeah, yeah. at oh, the okay, at that location. Okay. Yeah, yeah, oh, yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah. J just for the record, we are live now, the seventy sixth day, yeah, since uh, first of June. Uh, every oh. night we are live at eight thirty p.m. And uh, thank you so much for joining us, Mel Melanie. And uh, you can feel free to share your screen, and then we follow you on your journey underwater. Okay. Okay. So you guys can see. Yeah, yes. Yeah. Okay. Brilliant. Yeah. So, uh, before I start off, right, <laughs> to to be very honest, uh, yesterday I joined the session. It was amazing, lah. Uh, so I was telling you that, like, you know, I'm a little bit uh, nervous because uh, it's crazy. Uh, it's crazy. The photos, the experience, the story that um, he shared is amazing. So uh, just a little bit of background about today is just that I'm going to share uh, photography from my point of view. Uh, I'm, I'm just an amateur photographer uh, and, and my philosophy is just really keep it simple, keep it basic. So I'll share a little bit about uh, my gears, which is really simple and a bit of my tips and also mostly about diving creatures. Lah. Okay. Um, so let's get started. Uh, eh? Okay. So again, uh, this is myself, uh, underwater selfie, <laughs> uh, because it's hard to get people to take photo of you. Uh, not a lot of photographers underwater. Um, there are uh, a handful of them, usually more seasoned, and they don't really want to take photos of people. Uh, they want to take photos of fishes and uh, creatures uh, generally. Okay. So uh, like what Weta has mentioned, uh, I own a dive center in PJ Pumps. Uh, I also teach diving. Uh, in PJ Palms, uh, and uh, I've been diving personally uh, for about 10 years uh, and teaching for about five years. Uh, yeah, 
Okay. So this is my humble life center. Uh, briefly mentioned earlier that it is based in uh, PG Pumps. Uh, so we have we are full fledged life center. Like we have courses. We teach paddy course. Uh, we also have uh gears uh that we sell. Uh, full on scuba diving gears. We also teach swimming. So earlier Nuro has mentioned that she doesn't know how to swim. So for us mainly we are very uh. Uh, adamant about safety so we do provide swimming classes for students who wants to learn diving so you have to learn like basic swimming first before you actually start diving so we also do photography uh, so if you see uh, this is my photo uh, and then we also have like a, a area here that we sell photographic gears and that's how I know Hon <laughs> we do sell Olympus gears as well uh, we also know uh, Mohan I think Mohan is not here today uh, we do sell bubble scuba lights as well uh, alongside with other different brands uh, like Inon and whatnot, but mainly for diving gears. Lah, okay? uh, you can check out our socials and our website uh, when you're free. Uh, and then now for me, uh, like I said earlier, photography personally for me is my way of experiencing the world. So before I get started with uh, diving even, right, I started traveling first on land, okay? Uh, and for me, it is very simple. Uh, I want to document uh, whatever I see, whatever experiences I have. Uh, sorry, yeah, guys, I just want to apologize first. The sound is actually my dog. <laughs> so they are playing with each other. So I'm so sorry for the sound. Good, okay? good you explained that. <laughs> I was thinking, I was going to ask you whether you've had your dinner. <laughs> like pigeon, ah. <laughs> so sorry, so sorry. Uh, okay, back to back to my sharing. Um, okay, so photography is a way for me to experience the world. So uh, I started traveling, and traveling is a passion of mine. Uh, and I want to document uh, my travels, right? So, um, here are some of my photos that I took uh throughout my travels. So uh, I've been to a handful of places. Um, uh, mainly throughout Asia. Uh. Some places in uh, you know US as well, Americas. We went to uh, Brazil for FIFA as well. So a uh, handful of places. Generally, just things that I I you know my whole experience lah, right? And when I started diving, uh, I started diving when I was I just graduated. So obviously, diving gears are not cheap. <laughs> diving photography gears are not cheap either. So I started taking photos underwater later on. Uh, once I started working and all, yeah. Uh, and as I go into that, okay, uh, I also purely believe in a very simple setup because diving itself, you already have so much gears. So for me, obviously, you know, for me, photography is very personal. Um, it's not something that, you know, I'm looking to print out and stuff. Like Even if I print out, it's more for my personal uh, enjoyment, you know. So for me, really simple setup. The PG is amazing. Uh, I'm using a PG5 now. There's PG6 even better. Uh, uh, underwater photo, uh, underwater waterproof as well. I actually have a Fujifilm mirrorless before this and I flooded it. So it's really, really expensive. So uh, after that, I actually just uh, resorted to uh, TG5, uh, amazing macro underwater uh, camera, which does a lot even just for amateur photographers. Uh, and of course, if you can see, uh, the top is my macro setup. So I use a very simple snoot light. So this bubble scuba uh, is a brand from Taiwan. So I use a very simple handheld snoot light. Uh, I don't really like to use a, a whole rig because uh, I'll explain to you why later on. Because a lot of uh, creatures underwater, it's really, really small. Uh, and a lot of it are in nooks and crannies. So it's really hard if you have a very big uh, setup also uh, to go into those nooks and crannies. Uh, but of course, it depends. So for me, I would recommend for you to actually know your dive site, uh, for you to know what is your subject. Then you decide on how you want to set up your camera. But for me, uh, easy go-to is just this handheld TG5 with the casing and a snoot. That's it, simple. Uh, and then for wide angle, unfortunately, I do need, you know, the whole rig uh, because there's uh, additional underwater, uh, you know, wide lens, there's strobe and whatnot that you actually need. So uh, as we go along, um, so like I said, for me, simple 
light and easy to use. That's my key note. Uh, gears, scuba diving gears, you already have a lot of things in your hand for your own safety, you know. So I don't want to overcomplicate things as well, okay? Uh, now, of course, photography, I'm not going to talk about, you know, the usual uh, photography basic tips, like, you know, the ISO and whatnot, all those kind of things. Pretty much you guys know already. What I do want to talk about for me, uh, mainly for underwater photography, is these two things, lighting and composition. So um, underwater, uh, for those who are not familiar, uh, because there's less light underwater, as you go deeper also, the lighting changes. Okay, so uh, you also have day, uh, sorry, lighting changes is one thing, color changes as well, because as you go deeper, Red color goes off first, uh, orange color goes off first. Basically, your rainbow colors, uh, the red will go off first. So you need to understand uh, how light works underwater and then how you substitute the light underwater uh, to make sure that your photos look nice. Okay. You also need to know if you're doing a day dive or night dive uh, because obviously lighting is different as well. Uh, and is your dive a covered dive? Covered dive meaning to say sometimes you do uh, cave diving or cavern diving. So you don't have a direct sun, uh, sun source light as well. So you need to understand that. Second thing then is your source of light. So your artificial light that you're bringing down, is it a continuous or flashlight? Again, both has uh, its pros and cons. Um, continuous light, obviously, much easier to use. So if you see earlier, I've shared about the snoot, snoot, is basically a let me just show you it's basically like a torchlight uh with a very focused uh beam here so this is amazing for macro creatures small creatures that you have a very focused light uh that is easy for you to focus on your uh, subject uh for wide angle uh photos unfortunately you do need a very big stroke uh to try to provide enough light okay you also need to know your angle or the uh, of the source of light that you are uh, using. So again, a lot of these are just like trial and error. <laughs> Seriously, that's just trial and error. And again, it's also what you like as well. Uh, I'll show a couple of things later. I'll show you how lighting uh, works. Of course, then my favorite part is actually composition. Okay, um, a lot of the, the same rules, like, you know, rules of thirds, asymmetry photography, all these are pretty standard, even for land photography. Um, for, for scuba diving, a lot of people, a lot of uh, beginners, what they do wrong is, um, I wouldn't call it wrong, lah, but to make it more interesting, your angle of the photo is, instead of taking it from the top, because diving, usually people swim on top, right? And then you see the creature and then you take from the top. Right? But what would be more interesting is actually uh, be at the eye level of the, the subject. So you, it's, it's much more interesting. It gives a huge, a whole new depth to your photography. Okay, Try to find a focus. Okay, Generally, it's on the eyes. Uh, there's this thing called the nudibrang, which is the sea slug. Later, I'll show you some photos as well. You can focus on the rhino, rhinopause as well. So certain things are uh, like easy tips, uh, you know, that will add a lot to your photography. Of course, the background also, you have to try to see what is the background. Uh, like, for example, coral reefs. Some of the background looks really nice against your subject. So uh, again, all of this, like I said, trial and error. I think the wonderful thing I always tell my, my, my customers is that we are living in a digital age. It's not like it's film. Uh, we can snap away, you know, not to worry uh, that we don't, we, we run out of space or whatever. We snap away. If we don't like on the land, then we can throw it or we can even fix it, you know, in post-edit. So just snap away, okay, and trial and error, okay? Now, uh, as we move on, okay, uh, this is a very common thing that I realized for my customers, okay? A lot of new divers uh, or generally non-divers, right? Um, you guys are very excited about the big things. Uh, you see manta rays, you see turtles, you see whale sharks, you know? Uh, it's normal, right? Because all these are so majestic and it is still majestic even for seasoned divers like me, okay? So uh, that's it. Okay, I'm just going to bring you guys through first. Okay, so this is a typical 
uh, green turtle. Uh, that this is actually in uh, Komodo that I went. Uh, Komodo is in Indonesia. Uh, amazing dive site, amazing, uh, amazing reef, amazing life as well. So uh, this is uh, a green turtle. There are actually seven types of turtles uh, in the world. And uh, generally in Malaysia, you get the hawksbill and the green turtle. And in fact, uh, some <laughs> uh, interesting fact is the biggest turtle, the leatherback turtle, uh, used to actually lay eggs in our waters uh, in Terengganu. Uh, in recent years, what I've heard is that unfortunately, you know, it has uh, reduced uh, because, you know, uh, people are stealing eggs. Uh, it's not a very uh, safe place for the egg, for the turtles to actually come back to lay eggs. Uh, hopefully, you know, with the MCO, uh, this has changed. So far, I haven't read any research yet. Uh, but yeah, so a bit of a fact. Uh, for you guys. Uh, this is a turtle as well. Okay. Another thing that a lot of people like to see is the mantas. Yeah. So uh, again, this is the reef manta. Uh, reef mantas, uh, this is about three meters. Uh, it grows up to about 3.5 meters. Uh, reef mantas are generally smaller than the oceanic mantas. Uh, oceanic mantas can go up to about 4.5 meters in wingspan. Um, they are amazing. And even though, you know, like I've said, I've dived for about like 10 years, uh, <laughs> it's still amazing to see them. It is still very majestic to see them. Yeah. So uh, all newbies are always very excited when it comes to big things. Uh, yeah. So... Uh, do you know that uh, a couple of facts here, right? So these markings over here under the belly, uh, these are akin to our fingerprints. So not every mantas are the same. Uh, in fact, their markings under belly is different. So there is actually this site which is called the Manta Trust uh, that you can actually ID the manta that let's say you went diving, right? And then, uh, and then you snap this photo of this manta and then you can share it on the site and they will cross check their database. And if let's say no one has snapped this manta before, you can actually adopt it and you can name the manta as well. So every manta has different uh, uh, markings on its uh, underbelly, okay? Uh, this one is actually a black manta. So black manta, they are same as well, no difference. <laughs> Only difference is that they actually have the melanin, uh, same with humans, right? Um, it's just a uh, uh, darker pigment and melan melanism, okay? Uh, and they are a little bit more rarer uh, than, than the usual uh, oceanic or the reef mantas, okay? Uh, this one is another reef manta. Just wanted to show how happy the manta is as it's swimming. Now, this is the common octopus. Okay. Uh, my friend Roy is a huge fan of octopus. <laughs> uh, so just to let you guys know a little bit about the octopus, um, it has uh, three hearts, uh, nine brains, okay, and it pumps blue blood. Uh, and it's uh, actually one of the most uh, intelligent creatures uh, in the world. Uh, you can actually Google a couple of uh, facts about them on how they actually um, unscrew jars, unscrew jars uh, to actually get out of uh, captivity. Um, and, and there are a lot of different things. And if you're really into uh, octopus, I do recommend you to read up about them. They are really very, very smart creatures. Um, <clears throat> and uh, moving on, this is the cuttlefish. Uh, okay, so I know for Malaysia, we call them all sotong. <laughs> okay, everything is sotong. But actually, there's a huge difference. Okay, that's the octopus, which is sotong. Cuttlefish, this is the cuttlefish, which is also sotong. And there's also the squid, which is also sotong. Okay, the, the, the things that we usually eat is actually the squid. Um, we, we can consume octopuses and also cuttlefish, uh, but the ones that we generally eat at home is the squid. Uh, now, uh, a slight difference between uh, cuttlefish, actually they're totally different, but there's slight notable differences, which is uh, the cuttlefish and the squid actually has 10 tentacles, uh, while the octopus has eight. 
um, then the cuttlefish and the squid actually has an internal structure uh, to protect them, whereas the octopus doesn't have any. Uh, that's why it's much more flexible and it can go into like nooks and crannies um, and really morph themselves into different kinds of shape, uh, which is what's amazing about the octopus. Yeah. Uh, so the cuttlefish as well, this is probably about this size, maybe. Cuttlefish, this is actually quite big. Um, so it moves around, it hovers around like an octopus, like us. Uh, Oh, sorry, like an, a UFO. So it's quite interesting to see. Uh, like you guys already know as well, you know, they change shape and colors. And in fact, if you see, uh, they actually change uh, textures on their skin. Same thing with octopus as well. Uh, they change textures as well to kind of uh, mimic the coral reef around it, uh, which is amazing. Yeah. So moving on. So here on the left, you can see a school of yellowtail snappers. Um, so another thing that a lot of divers, especially newbie divers, love to see is schools of fishes. I mean, I still love to see it. So it's really amazing to see how fishes kind of move um, in their own wave. And I love to do this. I actually love to go inside and uh, you will see how they actually make space. And sometimes they kind of engulf you as well, which is amazing because um, it's just a very nice experience. Uh, <laughs> a handful of my students used to uh, describe this uh, as their little mermaid moment. <laughs> like uh, there's, this, there's this moment where, you know, the little mermaid kind of swim up. So it's the same kind of feeling, but it's real. Like you feel it, you know, it's not in the movie. It's not in the, it's not in the documentary. It's something that you feel feel and see at that time right uh, on the right you have the lionfish okay the lionfish uh, is a very beautiful but very venomous uh, fish um, uh, if you see all these spines uh, they are actually poisonous so if you accidentally nick it um, you you probably won't die but you do need to seek help uh, immediately okay so uh, this lionfish um, is actually a, a interestingly it's actually a invasive spe species uh, in some seas in the world uh, back in the day you know the matsales <laughs> they actually take uh, lionfishes as aquarium fishes and uh, they bring them around uh, as they they went around um, you know exploring conquering okay but over time, uh, they throw them into the ocean or the, the seas. They're actually invasive species. Uh, and because of that, uh, there is no natural predators. Uh, so they do become like a pest, uh, kind of uh, destroying the, the, the usual food chain. Uh. So uh, a lot of uh, locals like to eat them. You can actually eat them as well. Uh, so yeah, that's a little fun fact. Okay, uh, next would be coral reefs, okay? So for Malaysia, um, okay, so I was telling Beta earlier as well. Um, I think, fair to say, I think for next six months to a year, I don't think we will really go anywhere uh, overseas um, or rather it's safe as well, uh, you know? Uh, but the good thing about Malaysia is we are so blessed with a lot of uh, nature and especially the ocean, you know, we are a tropical country. Uh, we are so blessed with healthy reefs, healthy fishes uh, and things like that. So um, uh, the interesting fact is that we are actually um, in the midst of the coral triangle. So you guys, I'm sure know about the, the Great Barrier Reef uh, and uh, coral triangle is in between Philippines, Malaysia, and also the Indonesia. Um, and we are one of the best in the world. So a lot of people uh, after Great Barrier Reef is uh, affected, you know, uh, rather dying. Uh, a lot of people started to shift their focus towards the coral triangle. Uh, and Sipadan, uh, our, our gem, um, I always tell my students this, you know, it is uh, our backyard, you know. A lot of people travel from all over the world to try to see Sipadan. Uh, and as Malaysians, I think everyone should see it at least once in their lifetime because it's really amazing 
amazing coral reefs, amazing school of fishes, uh, amazing wildlife there. So, um, so yeah, uh, something to think about. Uh, hopefully, once the numbers go down and MCO is lifted. Um, yes, so one more thing I do want to actually bring to mind uh, to talk about is actually uh, a lot of unregulated fishing uh, in, in Malaysia still. Uh, actually, in our region, lah. I've dived in Philippines, I've dived in Indonesia as well. I've heard about, uh, I've actually personally heard fish bombing while I'm actually diving. Uh, the thing about diving, right, because you're in the water, you can hear further because sound travels further as well. So to be frank with you, I didn't see anything. I, I just hear a very loud boom. Um, and, and it was very scary, you know, uh, and, and looking around, I don't know what is it. And then going up, uh, the dive master is actually saying oh, it's fish bombing. Uh, and it happens in Malaysia. So uh, a lot of all these kind of things, and this is actually in Tenggul itself, just off uh, Terengganu. So all these are actually uh, fishing uh, nets, uh, and it's so heavy. We, we, we tried lifting it, we can't lift it. Uh, and if you see how it, they just dump it in and look at how it has affected the coral reef. Uh, so obviously coral reef die. Uh, fishing, so a lot of, um, I don't want to bring this up because um, a lot of, uh, you know, people are, or people and uh, companies are actually trying to talk about plastics. Plastics, yes, it is horrible. You know, it's, it's polluting our oceans, uh, fishes die and whatnot, but the bigger concern here is actually that, are not talk that, that people are not talking about, governments are not talking about, is actually the, um, the global fishing trade. So if you guys have time, you know, MCO, go to Netflix and watch Seaspiracy. Um, it is something about, they actually talk about how the global fishing trade uh, is not as clean as we think. Uh, and there's a lot of uh, underlying issues and actually uh, uh, fish, uh, ghost nets, ghost nets are actually a lot of, uh, they are just everywhere, you know, and ghost nets have a lot of bycatch. Uh, in fact, I, I, I can't find the photo, I wanted to put it here as well. When I was in Komodo, uh, we actually saw this huge manta ray, uh, and it has a very long, uh, there's a huge hook that was hooked onto the, I think it was onto the mouth, and the line was probably 12 meters to 15 meters long. So we actually swam towards it, against the current and uh, we managed to kind of pull and yank it. Uh, it was a very loud pong. So I think the hook probably broke uh, and then the mantari managed to uh, swim away. Lah. So the thing about this is, yes, it is not hot, but the thing is it's probably going to get stuck in a different coral reef. And when that happens, it, it, can't, it can't feed, it can't hunt, it can't go anywhere. So there's a lot of underlying issues with, you know, ghost nets. Uh, and all these kind of things. And then there's also an issue of bycatches. So a lot of uh, global uh, fishing trade, they catch a lot of fishes, yes, but there's also a lot of bycatches that they probably die in the process, like sharks, um, a lot of things that you can't eat probably, you know, and, and it dies because it's just got caught together, turtles and things like that, okay? Okay, now enough of this uh, a little bit gloomy conversation <laughs> we move on to uh, a different world altogether right so earlier i've mentioned about how a lot of new uh, divers are so interested in the, the the bigger things the majestic things but as you dive you know you start enjoying the little things as well okay and when you start enjoying the little things i think um you it's a whole new world a whole new world kind of open up to you Okay, that's Roy here over here as well uh, during our macro trip in uh, Jawara, Tioman. I think the first photo I see of Roy without a spider. <laughs> uh, okay, so um, this is a common octopus. So slightly different from earlier. So same species, but this is way smaller. So this is probably smaller than my hand. Eh, hold on. Uh. Why is it? Okay. So this common octopus is way, way, way smaller and uh, they actually hide in sand. They actually um, dig into sands and things like that. So uh, there's so many different types of uh, octopuses and I wanted to share more, but I can't find again. <laughs> there are, I've, I've seen mimic octopuses. I've seen white V, uh, so many wonderpus. Uh, all these are actually from uh, Anilau. Uh, Anilau is so amazing with macro shots. 
Uh, this is a mori eel. Um, so mori eel, fun fact is that, I'm not sure if you guys know, they have a double jaw. Uh, so this is their jaw, right? They also have a, they also have another jaw inside uh, that, that kind of comes out uh, when they attack and it's, it pulls the, the prey in. And the fun fact is that if you see their teeth is actually uh, slightly inwards, so it, it kind of prevents the food from coming out uh, or trying to get out of the mouth. So uh, yeah, and their jaw is that strong to actually break your bones. If so, don't put your hands close to the mori you if possible. <laughs> okay, so this, um, this is actually one of my favorites. Uh, I love frog fishes. Um, Frog fishes are actually a kind of angler fish. Sorry. Um, frog fishes are actually a kind of angler fish. Uh, for those who don't know what angler fishes are, they are the fish that has something on top and then there's this thing that dangles. Um, and the dangling thing is actually a, a koi. Uh, basically, whatever fishes, because they stay so still, they don't move. Uh, they stay so still, they look like a coral. Uh, with this dangling thing in front, it looks like a fish or, or possible food, lah, you know. And when the fish comes in front, the mouth actually opens up to 12 times bigger than its normal mouth size. Uh, in a split second, in six milliseconds, they actually open up, suck, and whatever fishes will just go in. Uh, so it's quite interesting to see because they, they look very harmless. They are harmless to human, lah, you know. Uh, they are just sitting there looking silly. So this one in particular, this particular species is called the hairy frogfish. Uh, this again in Anilau, um, all just looks very weird. Lah. Just looks like a very weird uh, alien looking creature. Yeah. And, and the interesting part is they look like a frog. Uh, they actually have two legs in front, uh, small legs. So they don't swim. They actually walk. They are bottom dwellers. They walk. Uh, if you lift them up, slowly you lift them up right and then you let them go they actually waddle they waddle to kind of go down to the floor uh, or any corals nearby but they don't swim they don't really swim okay um then we have this uh denise pygmy seahorse so this is the smallest seahorse so this is actually probably one cm or less than one cm the biggest this can grow is actually about 2.4 cm uh, so this is really, really small and they are always on a uh, sea fan. So if you see here, these are all actually the sea fan. Uh, and it's interesting that, uh, you know, this seahorse, they actually mimic the color of the sea fan. A usual uh, pygmy seahorse is usually pink in color. This one is actually yellow uh, and they're really, really tiny. They're probably like really, really super, super small. Yeah. Um, Next thing, I'm going to go into crabs. <laughs> okay, so this is the hermit crab. Now, I'm sure you guys know about this hermit crab. Uh, fun fact is that uh, hermit crabs are actually not crabs. Uh, They're actually more closely related to um, squat lobsters and cra uh, porcelain crabs, which I'll show you later as well. Um, and the interesting part about this uh, hermit crab is it actually has a soft spine and it uses a shell. So it needs a shell. Shell that is not, not they created. They actually use a different organism's shell, okay, to use it as a protection, okay. Uh, then this is the squat lobster that I was telling you about. Um, so it's really, really small as well. This is actually in a, in a, uh, sponge coral. Um, again, like I said, it's not really a lobster. <laughs> it's not really a crab either. So it's actually a, it's, it's closer towards a, uh, uh, how do I put it? Uh, a different species. It, not a different species, a different uh, family uh, of crabs. Yeah. This is a porcelain anim uh, anemone crab. Uh, you see the colors actually kind of uh, contrast uh, between the, the body and also and also the anemone. Um, again, this three of them, the hermit crab, squat lobster, and porcelain crabs are actually closely related, much more closely related. Basically because of the, the arm that is in front, big arm, the big uh, clams. 
then you have the normal coral crabs. Okay, there are tons of uh, coral crabs, uh, lots of different species. I'm going to show you a couple. This one as well. Uh, they like to hide uh, in coral reefs. Okay, uh, like I said, right, um, when you're diving, right, there's no such thing as you cannot see things on. They are there. You just need to find them. And that's why I said, um, that's why I said as you dive more, uh, a whole new world kind of opens up to you. So all these are actually amongst the nooks and crannies of coral reefs. So these are the uh, hard corals, coral reefs. Uh, and you see there's one, uh, two, three. There's so many over here. Yeah. So you just need to start looking. Uh, and cor coral and crabs uh, are actually co-dependent. So it's interesting that, uh, you know, they stay, they stay in the coral reef and the coral reef actually produce a lipid rich mucus uh, which is actually nutrition for the crabs uh, and of course crabs also uh, of course the coral also protect the crab uh, from predators um, and of course uh, these uh, crabs actually clean up corals so I'm sure you've heard about coral bleaching before okay coral bleaching happens when uh, you know slight drop of temperature or increase in temperature uh, or change of pH, slight changes, even one to two uh, Celsius will affect coral bleaching. So uh, corals, if you don't know, are actually symbiotic creatures. Uh, so basically, it's a, it's, a, uh, it's, a, it's a symbiotic creature that stays on the coral heart shelf. Uh, heart, uh, heart, uh, basically, it's like an apartment, lah, if you think about it, right? It's an apartment that this uh, symbiotic um, uh, creature actually live on the coral reef itself. Okay? And then, of course, they have photosynthesis and they actually help the corals to grow. Now, a drop of temperature or increase of uh, temperature causes coral bleaching, whereby they reject, they reject the coral reef and then it becomes white color. Now, when it rejects, that's still okay. It's not too late yet. The coral is not dead yet. Okay? The, 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 the issue when it becomes dead is when there's algae and things like that that lives on the coral reef when the, the coral actually cannot go back to inhabiting the coral reef. So then it starts dying. So creatures like the crabs, fishes and things like that will clean the coral reef. They will eat off the coral reef. So there's a symbiotic uh, relationship to all this, um, to all this relationship. <laughs> Okay, um, hey, another coral crab as well, another one. So there's a lot of different, uh, different species. La. It's like opening up a box of uh, chocolate, right? Just look into a coral reef and you see so many different types of coral uh, crabs. So this candy crab, uh, which, is the, which is my main photo also for tonight, uh, is also a coral crab. Okay, they are also a type of uh, coral crab. They are also a decorated crab as well. This one in particular, if you see, they are very regal. Uh, they, what they do is actually they pick uh, coral reefs around it and then they attach it to themselves. So this one attached a coral and put it on the head. It looks like a crown. Um, so it uses that to actually camouflage themselves even more. Okay, so they are... So this is from the side view, uh, quite interesting to see. Uh, this one is a, a harlequin crab. So in this picture also, you can see there are eggs as well uh, on the right side. So it's interesting to see how, you know, it's just such a small coral reef, right? But if you zoom in, like I say, it's a whole new world, right? Uh, uh, <clears throat> you can see coral families, uh, crab families, you know, manning their business, um, manning the eggs over here, you can see. Uh, and then the next one, if you can see, this is a type of decorated crab. Uh, it's the orang utan crab. Uh, looks like orang utan. <laughs> so this is actually in uh, Mabul, in Sipadan. Sorry. Uh, you know. Okay, in Sipadan. Um, this uh, orangutan crab, uh, same thing as, uh, same similar with the uh, candy crab earlier. They actually uses coral reef to actually uh, decorate themselves to make them look more like the surrounding coral reef. 
uh, as a camouflage. Okay. Uh, then you have now we move into shrimps. Okay. <laughs> so this is a hairy shrimp. Uh, this is smaller than 5 mm. So it really looks like uh, a, a small dot of hair flying around when you're diving. So um, this is one of the, the, the types uh, of uh, hairy shrimp. There are some that looks uh, very fine. Um, this one, if you see over here, uh, these are actually eggs on the back. So you can actually see them carrying their eggs as well. Uh, it looks like a rooster. <laughs> a lot of people actually akin it to a rooster, uh, the shape. Okay. And this is a sexy shrimp. Uh, why it's called a sexy shrimp is because if you see it and how it behaves, the butt actually moves like that. So it always shakes its butt. <laughs> so that's why they call it the, the sexy shrimp. Um, and then this is the spiny tiger shrimp. Uh, looks like a tiger. Uh, the, the, the pattern itself looks like a tiger. Um, next, this one um, is a feather star shrimp. So I'm not sure if you guys have seen a feather star before. Um, it looks very weird. It's actually a type of a starfish. Uh, if you lift it up, it will actually go like that. Okay, you can actually go and Google it. Uh, it goes like that. So this little bugger here, this feather star shrimp, they are actually hitchhikers. They actually stay in the feather star. Uh, of course, they eat them. That's where they get the colors. Um, they also use it as transport and also a protection, you know, uh, from, from different predators. So it's interesting to see how nature, you know, it knows lah, its space, you know, it, it will just stay here and it will eat uh, and it will camouflage because this feather star comes in different colors as well. They are blue color, yellow color, there are different kinds of colors and the, the shrimp itself looks exactly like that. Okay. And this is a sashimi shrimp. <laughs> Why does it look like a sashimi shrimp? Is because you see, this is the salmon on your rice. So this is a sash sashimi shrimp. And on the sashimi shrimp, there's another shrimp. I don't know what shrimp is that. So it's a, it's, a, it's a lucky shot where I actually managed to catch two shrimps uh, in one photo and the other one, don't know what it's doing, is riding the other sashimi shrimp. Yeah. Um, on the left uh, is the humpback shrimp. Uh, there's a huge humpback over here. Again, if you see the shape and the color of the shrimp resembles the coral reef that it's living in. Okay, And this one, emperor shrimp, um, even more interesting, it lives on uh, sea urchins. Uh, this color dot thingy is actually sea urchins. Uh, they live on them. Um, they also live on nudibranchs, which is something that I'll show you later. Uh, so again, same thing, they use them as protection um, and feeds of them as well. So quite interesting to see relationships like this. It really opens up a whole new world. And then you have the transparent versions, <laughs> okay? Uh, this is the ghost anemone shrimp. Uh, they are generally cleaning shrimps. So cleaning shrimps are very important uh, in the ecosystem. So uh, I, I can't find the photos where you see uh, eels, they actually open up their mouths. Uh, and you know, these cleaning shrimps and all will just go into their mouth and start cleaning. Um, and, and they somehow understand there is a understanding or an agreement between them knowing that, you know, they won't eat them. The eel won't eat them. Uh, they won't do any harm to the eel or anything. So it's just a mutual understanding uh, of these uh, creatures uh, on how things work, you know. Uh, and this cleaner shrimp, they are 100% tran transparent. Uh, I don't know how and why, but nature is interesting and nature is amazing. So, yeah. And this one on the right is actually a pistol shrimp. Uh, pistol shrimps do, uh, do, do have colors. Uh, this is the juvenile one. They're actually in the sack. So uh, pistol shrimp, surprisingly, is actually one of the, <laughs> the how do I put it? Uh, the most fastest gun in the ocean. They call it the fastest gun in the ocean. So they have this uh, clam. 
okay, that actually uh, snaps very fast, okay, and it creates a water bubble, okay, imploding, and it's very powerful. When it implodes, there's a powerful jet that actually uh, shocks their, their prey, like it uh, can be a crab, it can be a fish, a small fish, uh, and then of course, then they come and eat the, the prey. Lah. So um, it's quite interesting to see them in the sack and they're still transparent in color. Uh, now, another thing I want to say is Pistol Shrimp has a very interesting relationship with a uh, gobi. Okay, not this gobi in particular, a normal gobi. Uh, so a gobi and a pistol shrimp, uh, those divers, they would see it lah, anywhere on the, on the sea floor. Okay, uh, the pistol shrimp will be digging a hole. And then you have this taiko, this uh, gobi will be standing outside of the, outside of the hole. Uh, kind of uh, guarding. Uh, so the pistol shrimp will clean the hole, they will take out sand, they'll make the hole and everything. And if you swim closer, they will both of them will retreat back into the hole. So it's a it's a symbiotic relationship where they actually live together. So uh, the gobi is like the taikola, they provide protection. Uh. Yeah. Uh, but okay. Back to this yellow gobi. This yellow gobi is quite uh, uncommon. Uh, this photo is actually taken uh, in a bottle. Uh, it's actually like a beer bottle underwater. Uh, and there's this two gobi that stays in there. Uh, so they were just going around in circles uh, playing with each other. So it's quite fun to see. Um, okay, moving on. Uh, this is a cowrie snail. Okay. So I'm sure you have seen all these nice shells uh, that you probably pick up by the sand, uh, by the beach, okay? They are actually from this little cute fella, okay? And uh, this cowrie shells, uh, interesting enough, they, they used to be money as well in Africa. So you know how we used to barter trade? Uh, shell used to be a currency. So that's quite interesting to, to, to know, okay? Now then, I will move on to nudibranchs. Okay, uh, nudibranchs are sea slugs uh, underwater, and they are called nudibranchs because they have naked gills. Uh, so these are rhinopores. These in front ones are not rhinopores, but the gills are the ones in the back. Uh, this one, it's not in focus. Uh, those are uh, their gills. Okay, so. It's called nudie brunks, okay, because they are naked. That's why it's nudie, <laughs> okay. Um, now, nudie brunks, what I like to call them is they I think Roy used to say this, they are like the, the drag queens of the ocean, okay. They are superbly uh, beautiful, uh, amazing colors, amazing shapes and sizes as well. So it's very interesting whenever you find them. Uh, you, I'm going to show you a couple of them. Uh, and, and they range in sizes, like it, they go from like 5 mm, which is really, really, really tiny, uh, up to one meter, maybe, maybe not one meter, maybe like about uh, the size of, bigger than the size of a small dog, uh, like a Spanish dancer is really, really big. Yeah. So uh, this one on the left uh, is a, one of the common ones. This, if you see, it's actually a pimple. So they're just different species. And why they are so colorful and brightly colored <clears throat> is because, uh, again, you know, nature, lah, okay? They, it's, it's like a warning sign to their predators uh, to not attack them. <laughs> uh, second thing is also, um, they, some of them are toxic uh, because they, they actually eat corals and some corals uh, and tourniquets are actually toxic. Uh, they also eat jellyfishes as well, uh, which also have stinging cells. Uh, so some of them are fine, uh, but uh, some, most of them are actually poisonous and toxic. Yeah. And this one is again a pen. You see this one as well? Look at the colors and shape. It's very different. One thing to the other is very, very, very different. This one is called the Pikachu Nudie. Uh, again, I'm sure you guys know Pokemon. Uh, it is purely because it looks like a Pikachu, yeah. Uh, then you have the more flamboyant ones. Uh, this one is the Flabellina family, uh, where you see there's a lot of uh, uh, frills on the back. 
this one is actually not the Flabellina family, but it looks similar. It's actually the Opal, Opalson's uh, family. So it's slightly different, uh, but they're all nudie browns. And this uh, is actually uh, <clears throat> a palette hate shield slug. Uh, it's not a nudie brown, it's a sea slug. Um, but it's a slightly different uh, 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 species. And this is actually a sap suckling slug. It's also not a nudie brown, but it's, sap, uh, it, it's uh, this sea, sea grass over here, if you see. So this one in particular is actually really, really interesting. Um, when I see this, I was very, very amused. Uh, if you see the back here, uh, it actually opens up. If it feels like it is uh, threatened, it opens up to mimic the, the seagrass beside it. And then um, if you see, there's actually a hump on its back also, which looks like this uh, seagrass. Yeah. This uh, looks like the famous uh, Sean the Ship Nudie. Uh, I can't find a good Sean the Ship as well, but it's not. Uh, it is also a sea, sea sap suckling uh, sea slug. Uh, it is slightly different. It's called the uh, the the Nama Glamour like, is furry Ercolonia, but uh, here is the scientific name. Like. It's really, really small. It actually looks slightly different from the the new Sean the Ship Nudie because if you see, it looks like a rhino horn instead of the top. And the eyes is actually on the side. The Sean is shaped, the eyes is in the front. Yeah. Um, you also get to see uh, interesting life <laughs> uh, between these small little creatures. This is actually a uh, um, bobtail squid. Uh, this is in the sack itself. And this is really, really, really small. It's about 3 mm only. It's, 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 it looks like a white patch if you don't really zoom in. Uh, with the camera. Um, this, if you see, is uh, Pink Dorit. Uh, they are having sex. Uh, so, they, so these creatures, the, their reproductive um, organs are actually on the right side. Uh, so if you see, that's why uh, this is how they actually reproduce. And then when they lay eggs, uh, for nudibranchs in particular, they lay eggs uh, in a spiral. It looks like a ribbon. Uh, when they actually do lay eggs, yeah. Um, yep. So that's a little bit of my sharing. Um, for me, uh, cameras open up a whole uh world of infinite possibilities, uh, especially in diving. Because, uh, again, let me just point back again. All those photos that I've taken, all those five mm small little things, are just purely with a Olympus TG five, uh, and also just with a snoot light uh, and and that's it so if i don't have a camera i won't be able to see this uh if i don't have a camera i won't be able to know of these creatures so so this is what uh photography means to me in a way it really opens up an, a world of infinite possibilities that i don't know about um and uh, i just want to leave uh with a few notes uh mainly for all my divers or for you who are looking to go diving, right? Whenever you take photos diving, don't take anything. Don't take a uh, rock, don't take anything, right? Just take photos uh, and leave bubbles, right? Um, make sure buoyancy is very, very good. Don't crash into creatures. Don't touch or move them uh, to take photos. Uh, try, you know, to respect nature uh, whenever you, you take photos. Uh, yep. That's it from me. Uh, I can take for, uh, questions now, if you guys have any. Thank you, Melanie. Fantastic sharing. Eh? Mm. I, I guess, you know, from the time when I did my open water, like uh, in those days, it was pre-digital. Eh? And then, then taking photos wasn't that uh, and it's such an in thing yet because it's, you really need to be very, very specialized to do film, film photography underwater. So the tagline at the time was like, you know, um, uh, uh, just uh, you know, uh, don't 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 take anything away. Just leave memories. Uh, just take away memories and leave yes. bubbles behind. Eh? So I yes. guess times have changed. You can actually take photos now. Eh? <laughs> last time we just take memories. Eh? Yes. yes, and last time it's so expensive. Yes, super super expensive, especially going diving underwater. 
Yeah. Uh, and the risk of it flooding, like me, uh, yeah. my my mirrorless camera flooded and it costed so much. And with the Olympus, you know, on <laughs> helping to push us, so it's so easy to use. Yeah. It's really really easy to use. And all these uh, photos that I took are really just handheld. Uh, yeah. with photos. Uh, uh, sorry, with the handheld torch, yeah. and that's it. You know, so easy to use. Uh, cheap. Uh, and it opens up a whole new possibility, uh, a whole new world. Uh. How yeah. long have you been uh, photographing underwater, uh, Melanie? Mm, mm, let's see. Uh. <laughs> uh, probably about, with the Olympus, is about uh, three years. Okay. With the, I had my mirrorless before this, la, so a year before, la, so about four years only. It's not bad that you have, you have photographed quite a lot of like, uh, you know, weird and wonderful things in four years. Huh? <laughs> Considering the last uh, year and a half was like, you know. Yeah, yeah, like, yeah, yeah. You know, I like think, no diving. Eh? I think um, I think this is also another thing like uh, Roy would, would, would testify to this also. I think if you go with a bunch of like macro photographers, right, you yeah. will really like go crazy. And uh, I have to shout out to um, uh, Scuba Amigo in uh, Joara Tioman. Uh, it's really amazing macro. A lot of people always talk about Lembe, Anilau. Lembe is in Indonesia and Anilau is in the Philippines. Uh, but we do have like amazing uh, macro sites uh, in Malaysia itself, in Tioman. So, um, but I have to just tell everyone, if you are into big things, okay, don't go to Jawara. Because <laughs> you will be so bored. So again, right, like I said, I think diving has so many things to offer for everyone. If you like big things, there are big things. There are small things as well. Uh, mm. But I like to say is, like, I think for me, it's just a general growth. Uh, when you start off, you like to see big things. On. But as you dive more and more and more and more often, right, it's normal to start looking and then you start appreciating diving in different manner. Like, it's like a, it's like a treasure hunt. Because mm. you never know what you find and whatever you find is, is amazing, you know? Like, a lot of things I didn't even know existed and I still don't know a lot of things existed. <laughs> Uh, and I think that is the joy of it. And even diving for 10 years, uh, you still find joy in, in, in exploring different things. Yeah. How many of you guys are compelled to dive <laughs> from this sharing? Come on, open up for questions now. <laughs> yeah, right, before the Q&A, &A, sorry, sorry for interrupt. Okay, before the Q&A sections, we should take a group of vote with uh, Melina. So everyone, please turn on your camera. <laughs> group photo time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You have to take the group photo. After that, we're going to the q and sessions. Okay. Okay. Hello, Roy. <laughs> Roy. Roy, double feature. You're, you're also an underground, underwater photographer. Yeah, he has surpassed. He oh, calls this... himself Roy the dive bro. Now he's just the macro bro. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Uh, wait up. Just help me, yeah? Yes, yes, yes. I got it. Okay. Okay. So everyone, please look on the camera. Uh, you, you take uh, Without you take. Okay, got it. You got it, huh? Yep, okay. got it. Got two slides, is it? Okay, let's see. Yeah. Uh. Yeah. That's the second page, huh? okay. Yeah, second page, yes. Oh, let me take the second page. Uh, go to yeah. the second page, okay. Okay. Okay, everybody look at the camera. We're not done yet, okay. Big smile for Melanie. Three, two, one, yes, <laughs> smile. Okay, good. All right, okay, thank got you. it. Thank you. Okay, now it's Q&A section, yeah. Yeah, hi, Melanie. Hi. Uh, I was going to ask a question hmm. for you to elaborate. How many hours of training <laughs> is necessary in a swimming pool? And then after that, how many hours of training in the open sea before we can go diving like you? Ayu, this so, one is a very hard question. <laughs> <laughs> okay, to be very honest with you, uh, because like I said, I, I teach diving as well. Um, I have seen uh, water babies uh, who jump in the water. First time, uh, no problem, perfect buoyancy. I have also seen people who have dived for like 50 dives, still fumbling around. <laughs> so
So it's really hard to say. It's really, really hard to say. But one thing that is for sure is uh, the more you practice, the more you dive, right? The better it gets. Right? You will definitely get better one. This is 100%. Uh, yeah. So um, how many times, how many, how much practice uh, to get better in, in photos and stuff like that? I think for me, to be frank with you, uh, maybe because like I... I'm very progressive maybe I dive first so my buoyancy is quite good already because buoyancy is very important when it comes to diving because it's not like you're on land right nothing is gonna move right but when you're diving you're kind of floating and the idea is you want to be neutrally buoyant because you don't wanna you don't want to bang into things you don't want to bang into the corals you don't want to bang to the fish you don't want to disturb the fish also right so your buoyancy has to be very very good and of course steady hands all photographers know you need to have steady hands so buoyancy is very very important uh that's it also uh that's why we always pr uh promote buoyancy we do have buoyancy workshops we do have photography workshops also coming up in our dive center uh so a lot of things that you guys can practice in a pool to try to save your time uh, when you go to the di your island uh, you are at least stable already you know, so your likelihood to get better photos will be better. Yeah, but if you ask me, is there like a hundred hours for sure? Okay, very hard to say. Uh. <laughs> but practice makes perfect. Uh. Really just snap away. Uh. Really, really just practice. Yeah, yeah. Okay, thank you. Thanks. Uh, any more questions from anybody? I think, let's see the chat. Hmm. Uh, hi, Melanie. Hi. Yeah, just I'd like to ask uh, those uh, objects, those those shots that doesn't you presented. He's talking about what kind of depth uh, that uh, you are entering the ocean. Okay. Uh, to be frank with you, <laughs> uh, very shallow, oh, uh, Again, see. it depends. Again, it depends on the creatures. Really depends on the creatures. Like uh, the pygmy seahorse. Uh, usually, it is quite deep like about 20 plus 30 meters, uh, depends Meadows. on the location. Uh, no, the pygmy seahorse. You mean uh, uh, meters or feet? Uh, meters, 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 mm. meters, yeah. Uh, but most of the stuff, like if you see the crab shots, the needy brungs and things like that, they are very, very shallow. Even I like see. 10 meters, also got 15 meters. And that's the best kind of dive, at least for me. Uh. Mm. <laughs> that's why I like it because it's very, very chill dive. Mm very comfortable dive, very shallow, safe, uh, and your air consumption is also very little because you're quite close to the, the, the surface. So your air consumption is actually lesser. So you can actually stay longer, which means yeah, you can, Because of the pressure, is it? Correct. Which hmm. means you can actually stay longer to get the best shot that you want. You know, So your likelihood of getting the best shot is higher also. So a lot of uh, macro so dive trips, also easier to control the uh, the sea buoyancy and also uh, the uh, under uh, underwater current. Uh yeah, usually macro dive uh usually very little uh, current one uh, very chill and macro dives are very very chill. You really just go down, you stay there, and you just take snap 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 snap. Yeah, so that's the beauty of it lah. Yeah, I think a couple of questions here is uh yeah. I love the ocean. It's not a zoo and you never know what to expect. Um, what is your most unexpected photo? Would you say it's the gobies in the, in the bottle? Wow, so many unexpected photos. <laughs> there are also a lot of unexpected big moments also. Uh, uh, like uh, my, my first whale shark, uh, I, I, I don't have a good photo of this because um, my photos are a bit pixelated for that one. But uh. The whale shark that, I've, that I first met was um, basically there was a diver that had issues. Uh, she, was ha she was having issues and the whole group just went down. She was having issues and I was tending to her. I was helping her basically. And then everyone just left and then it was just both of us. And then there was a bit of current also. Uh, and, then when I, and then when she calmed down, I uh, wanted to pull her towards the group, which is quite far. Um, and then there was also a bit of current. And then she just like calmed down suddenly and she, she started tugging me. She's like, uh, okay. So I look on the right and the whale shark is just right beside us. And it is huge. It's, it's probably like about five meters big. And wow. it's just right beside us. So uh, like uh, M, uh, M mentioned here, uh, the ocean is really, really not a zoo. Uh, anything happens. Um, it's amazing. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I think 
how okay as the how did I flirt my mirrorless? Uh, again, it's a stupid uh mistake of mine. Uh, it was on a trip to Raja Ampat. Uh, it was again if you do a leave abroad, usually it's more than five days uh, because you travel so far and you live on the boat. So uh, we've been diving for like two three days, and then one day we kind of take an off day, and then I just left my gears and everything clean. He left it. And then the next day I wanted to go in, I forget to check. So the O-ring wasn't closed properly. I went in and then flooded off. So it's really, it's really human error. Uh, nothing to do with the camera, nothing to do with the casing, anything is really human error. Yeah. And that's why TG5 is good because uh, uh TG TG is good because it's waterproof up to 15 meters. And with your casing, even if it's waterproof, it's gonna survive. Yeah. Um, hold on. Uh, did I use? Yes, I use TG five for all my macro uh photos shot uh shot. No lens use, just purely the camera. I didn't use. I have a close up lens, uh, but I didn't use it. I just got it after MCO, so I never managed to use it. <laughs> so the the photos that I've taken all purely just the camera, no additional lens. Um, what other questions, guys? You can ask. <laughs> Hi, Melanie. Hi. Hi, Tony here. Hi, Tony. And notice some of your shots are without the strokes, right? You are just use mm. natural lighting, right? Mm. So generally, yeah, stroke... Very nice, yeah. Uh, I, not the one lighting. with the mantas and all that are not with, with any lighting, uh, with the natural ah, light, yes, right? Yes, that one natural yeah. light, because they are actually quite shallow already. Yeah. Probably yeah. about 5 meters or less, right. uh, yep. really shallow. So that's why I said uh, earlier in my sharing, a couple mm. of things to note would be lighting and also composition. Yeah. So lighting, yeah. if you're shallow, sometimes you don't yeah. even need additional lighting. You don't even yeah. need artificial lighting. Of course, yeah. that's it. If it is also um, it is also clear waters. Ah. So yeah. clear waters make your life so much easier right. because if yeah. you have bad visibility, then there's yeah. sediments as well in the water. Then yeah. your photos uh, will definitely not be as nice. Lah. Uh, mm, 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 the mantas mm. are you got it from Komodo or Bali? Komodo. Komodo. Huh? Komodo. Right. Okay. Yeah. Bali, uh, I went, uh, but it's in a whole different drive. <laughs> Very lazy to fly. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But uh okay. we are very blessed, la, to be frank with you, right? We are very, very blessed to stay uh in, in this region, not just in Malaysia, but in this region where all these amazing dive spots are just around us. Uh you know, that's it, COVID, COVID aside, you know, uh, we can easily just jump on the plane to, you know, Indonesia, to Philippines, uh, to dive uh, and to yeah. see a lot, of, a lot of amazing things. Uh. Yeah, yeah. Totally agree with you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. You, you guys should they take really up diving. <laughs> I'm a diver. Yeah. Ah, you're a diver lah. My whole family uh, is divers. Oh, nice, nice, yeah, nice, yeah, nice, yeah. nice, nice. Been diving for quite a while. Mm. But uh, due to time frame, I stop and then you know, yeah. Then no time to continue again. Went into birding. Ah, yeah, birding is. <laughs> but also I would love to one. go back diving again. Yeah, so I, I got my gears, the uh, photographing gear, mm. DSLR, and then I didn't mm. have much time to dive. Uh. Yeah. Mm. So before that, I think I think I've seen a lot of uh, underwater photographer with amazing DSLR. And obviously, they take even way better photos than mine, uh, you know. But I think the point I want to make is uh, even just with Olympus, right? Uh, mm. Such a small handheld camera, you can do so much already. So purely for me, you know, it's just for my personal um, uh, memory, you know, my my own note, you know. Uh, it's good enough for me, you know. Uh, I, I think that's the amazing thing, lah, you know, Han? <laughs> yeah, it's nice photos you got with the camera. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, Just it's very nice photos, yeah. Very simple yeah, All, to all use. the critters that you got, very nice, yeah. Mm. With and that I, camera, you know, yeah. uh, it's uh, really... Yeah. And and I think my, my key point I want to note is that a lot of people think, oh, shrimp, shrimp got one kind of name, the one you can eat. <laughs> but there's just so many, so yeah. many creatures, you know, that we don't know about. And in fact, I yeah. still don't know a lot of creatures also. Um, yeah, so, yep. <laughs> Melanie, mm. uh, I have a question. Mm. For a beginner, um, where would be the best place to to do underwater photography in Malaysia? 
you want wide angle or you want a uh, macro angle? Uh, macro, macro. I mean, just say like I went out to and then uh, bought the TG5 from Horn. Nah. Where should I go? I'm I'm sorry. <laughs> All right, right now, right now, TG six. Uh, TG six. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So if I if I go and get the latest the Olympus TG, yeah, okay, and if I if I sign up for open water course with you, where would you take me? Yeah. Okay, now again COVID, ah, huh? okay. Yeah. Uh, to be frank with you, just go anywhere. Uh, if you, I as a beginner, uh, I will actually not recommend you purely macro. Because, uh, like I said, a lot of newbies they they don't hundred percent uh appreciate it yet. Because mm. to them it's like can't see anything. One, there's nothing. You ask you, you yeah, look in the true, sand. It's true. You know. So I would recommend anywhere, even Tioman, Tengo, or whatever. Right. You get a mix of both things, and there's still small things there as well. Um. So if your dive master is good and can spot, you still get the best of both worlds. So you still see the big things like in Tengo. There's so many uh will. Uh, Okay, no one say this because you jinx it. There are whale <laughs> sharks there as well. The like I said, the beauty of the ocean is it's not a zoo. It is really what you get, and it's it's nice and not nice because if you don't get, then you set. But when you get, it is really a memory that you remember for life because it's really your luck, you know. So uh, so Tioman, uh, I personally like Tioman because there's best of both worlds. You get the bigger stuff, you get the macro stuff as well. Uh, a good coral reef if you go further out uh, mm. you can go to the north or the south go really further out don't dive at uh, you know the common areas not so nice um, if you want Tengol is really really good as well uh, I think some of my coral reefs are actually from Tengol earlier really healthy coral reefs uh, big fishes there as well there are some macro lah, uh, probably I don't have uh, uh, the best macro spotter dive master. So they're all there one. I don't doubt they're there. You just need to have an amazing spotter. Then you will see, it, you know. Steven, uh, uh, Steven you, should do, uh, <laughs> yeah. you should do more diving because you've got fantastic eyes. Uh. <laughs> the, the things that I usually see are kind of big. You see? <laughs> <laughs> but these are true, almost microscopic. They're so small. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So oh. th that's why I want to shout out, like I said, the Scuba Amigo, uh, really amazing spotters. Uh, they are all amazing spotters. Uh, all you need to do, uh, to be honest, uh, we all, you ask Roy, he can testify. <laughs> we only need to descend and we stay there already. We don't really swim, you know, we just stay there. And then they'll just start looking, you know, and, and there are just so, many, so much things. Just that area, you get so much things. So just imagine... Uh, anywhere la, they are there you just don't see it you know yeah so I also see that as a beauty of of, of diving la, of macro photography it opens up a whole new world la. yeah so uh, Melanie I want to ask mm. uh, on a typical muck dive that you lead right how long is the dive time <laughs> like how how, um, how long does your tank last <laughs> on a muck dive uh, again, it depends on the divers, um, depends on how comfortable your divers. So generally, if they're all photographers, uh, experienced diver, very calm diver, it lasts about 60 minutes and above, uh, an hour and above. It can go up to an hour and a half before. Really shallow dive, lah, maybe about 5 to 8 meters. Um, it really depends on the diver. Sometimes we have to go up because it's too cold. <laughs> Because we've been underwater too long. It's not that we don't have air. It's just that, you know, we're just uncomfortable already. We just have to go up. Yeah, and, and time flies. So, like I said, all you need to go, go down in that five meter square foot. You don't need to move. You know, it's like a buffet. The, the, the spotters are so good. They will actually show you where all these kind of things. You just need to swim a bit and then you take. So, time flies. Sometimes you don't even know it's been like one and a half hours. Yeah. Okay. Another question is this. I mean... You know, um, normally when you go diving without photography, yeah, uh, mm -hmm. with a pure recreational diver, you go down with your buddy and you basically just like, you know, wander around and sort of look at the, you know, like uh, sea life around you. Eh? With, a, with a drive where you're actually specifically going down to do photography, would you organize that differently? Uh, yes. So that one purely the macro dive trips off. Because, mm. uh, like I said, all these macro dives, uh, like the mark dive that uh, yeah. Stephen was saying, to newbies, uh, nothing to see one, really. It's just sandy bottom, 
really just sandy bottom and then you have some corals that are not very pretty corals. You know, and that's where you really look into the nooks and crannies. And that's why earlier I said at the beginning of my, my, my chat, right, I don't really like to use the whole setup because a lot of all these nooks and crannies, you cannot go in. And they are really microscopic uh, size uh, creatures. So with all those things, you really can't get the best angle. So for me, I really like to really just keep it simple, handheld. But like I say, like, your buoyancy has to be damn good. Uh. Your hands, steady hands. Uh. Really, really steady hands. And your buoyancy has to be damn good. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So for macro dive trips, usually purely photographers, a lot of them. Um, if not, you will be them bored. And then you have the big, the big stuff one, like uh, like a Komodo trip. Then it's a mix of both. You have the photographers. You also have normal divers, uh, and things like that. Yeah. 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 Any more questions? How to ad advise on how to deal with backscatter or oh. Backscatter is the most annoying thing. <laughs> um, like I said, your light source, oh, your re really your light source, um, and how you angle it also uh, makes a huge difference. Uh, of course, buoyancy is the most important thing. <laughs> Imagine a lot of people doesn't really have good buoyancy. This is your subject. You start kicking up sand, then the whole sand poof. Then you have to wait till it settles, lah. Which mm. is even worse because then your 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 photos are all backscatter and everything. But let's say on a good day itself, how to deal with backscatter? Your lighting, really your lighting. So if you ask me, it is actually way easier to take macro photography because it's very focused light and focused subject versus wide angle. Wide angle, you really need very powerful stroke, and the way you angle your stroke makes a difference. Uh, how you want to do it because then that kind of uh your lighting would deal with the backscatter. Lah. You have to really strong light. Ah. So again, this one so trial and error. You really need to just try and error. Uh, some people like to do it here. Some people like to do it here. Again, it really depends. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it really depends on, on, on yourself. I'm also learning uh, for what angle. Actually, I find it way harder than uh, macro photography. Yeah. Mm. Hi, uh, hello, Melanie. Hi. Hi, uh, Hi Lucy. Lucy here. Hi. Yeah, uh, yeah, uh, uh, it's good to see uh, all the photos that you take and you actually put the names and explain about those uh, animals under the sea. So it, it's very good for your effort. Thank you. Uh, one, one sad thing I feel is that uh, the sea is so different from last time, long ago, because when you go down, all the reefs are very colorful. Mm. And they are all alive, and mm. you really can see a lot. But unfortunately, now because of the bleaching, because of the dying, all the changes, and also a lot of uh, people catching them mm. to sell as aquarium fish mm. uh, and corals, or those. So uh, sadly, they, they, there's not so much to see now. But I would really like to encourage everyone if, if you have a chance really go and dive and see the underwater world because yeah. it's so beautiful and if you wait for another 10 years maybe there's hardly anything to see i agree with you lucy yeah yeah because i i started going down 40 years ago wow so the, the world is very different it's I've... really so colorful I've, I've heard a lot of uh, otais uh, in diving industry, right? Like, you know, they've dived for like 40, 50 years. And they used to tell me in, in Tioman itself, there's manta, re manta rays, there's uh, all those hammerheads, everything. A lot, a of, lot. A lot of creatures. Yeah. Yes. But yeah. now you go down, you see all just dead, like dead corals, white color bleaching. It, it's so... Because I, I used to dive very often mm. last time. Mm. Uh, long ago, so I I have seen quite a lot, like uh, even a lot of starfish. Mm. There are a lot mm. of starfish, all different color. But unfortunately, later I see more of the the tone of crown starfish. Mm. They yeah. eat up all the coral. Yeah. So yeah. <laughs> it's yeah. really sad. And one thing I I noticed that uh. So far, a few of the dive talks, uh, no one mentioned Redang. Uh. Redang. Ah, what happened? Huh? Yeah, yeah. I just wanted to say Redang. 
Yeah, uh, yeah because <laughs> when I went there, uh, the dive center has 22, uh, 20 over dive sites. Mm. And there were even some that is very new where they throw in things to let the corals grow. Mm. So they are actually preserving the, the coral reef and they are also trying to grow new, new reefs. Uh, actually, throughout Malaysia, also got we are also gonna do. Uh, okay, so one of the things that we are very passionate about is actually to you know show people underwater because I think generally people don't see, they don't know, and like what yeah. you say, um, we, all they hear is like you know uh don't throw plastic lah, don't do all these kind of things you know which which is fair, which is good effort done, uh, but I think you would not understand it until you actually see it and experience it for yourself. Yes. Uh, and and I don't doubt what you say. In fact, I believe in what you say. That forty years ago, it used to be amazing, you know. It's and yeah. yeah, and and I think a lot more people needs to have the awareness for this. And actually, speaking of uh, earlier, um, I think uh, Tony, you mentioned about birding. I think so. I have a friend who does birding uh around Southeast Asia, and he actually wrote a book about it. So, and he also dives. So I was talking to him about. Uh, what you have mentioned earlier, Lucy, you have said about, you know, how people actually steal fishes uh, mm. for aquariums and things like that. Yes. So it's mm. funny to note, right, birding actually has a proper association that bans uh, all this uh, illegal uh, poaching and stuff like that. But mm. fishing, there is none. There is, uh, there is I think none. It, I think it is better now because uh, uh, I, the countries do have a little bit of control. Uh, like last time, like, like you said, they, they form the fish, mm, mm. throw cyanide into the water so that the fish will flow up easier mm. for them to catch. You know? so yes. Those are less. Yes. So there are some efforts by uh, local governments uh, to kind of have like, you know, this uh, marine uh, parks and, and all this park, conservation, yes. etc. Yeah. Uh, but it's not enough. Uh, I think, I don't know why, but the ocean is like a very, maybe it's too big. Maybe no one wants to go into managing it. That's why I said about Netflix seaspiracy. Uh, again, the fishing industry is so big. It's a lot of money also. So a lot of people don't want to, you know, poke holes into it. Uh, <laughs> but also, it is also international borders, right? Who yeah. Who can kind of guard it you know, so I think it's a very hard to guard topic. So I feel that there should be more that can be done. I don't know how, um, but there should be more, lah, you know, like uh, for birding. Actually, there should, yeah. Yeah. You were saying? Yeah, I was saying, uh, I actually saw what they did in Sampona. Hmm. In Sampona, uh, in the open sea, there's one area where uh, the water is shallower. And there's a very beautiful coral reef. Uh, it's right in the middle. It's not not uh, away from any uh, near to any island. Mm. Um, and there was the the Sampona, uh, the means the Sabah government actually built a little uh, sort of like anchor point uh, at that coral reef. And we met the people who stationed there to cut the reef. Mm. And the reef the reef is really very beautiful. It's colorful, and there's mm. a lot of fish swimming around. You can actually see, it. and it's on, and the water is very shallow, and the water is so clear because you know some Pona side, uh, yeah. the, the the water is very very nice, and there are some places you don't even need to go down very deep. Just uh, some basic snorkeling. Mm. and just go down uh, maybe about five meters like that. Mm. You can actually see a lot of uh, marine life already. Yeah. You know see, I'm just a bit mindful of time. I just want to see if yeah, there's yeah, yeah. any other questions uh, from any okay, other members. Can... Yeah, yeah. Thank, thank you. Yeah. Okay, thank you. Yeah. Let's see. Yeah. Okay, I think Nuruddin asked if there's any tips uh, in approaching the sea creature without scaring them away. Um, again, buoyancy. I think buoyancy is really key. Um, and then approach really slowly. Uh, and I realize a lot of times, right, if you are, 
again, a lot of people are very scared of uh, the ocean or sea creatures because, you know, you hear jaws and things like that. But generally, right, sea creatures are the same as any other animals. Uh, they will not attack unless attacked. You know, they any any creatures are like human beings also. You won't go and punch someone ma, walking on the floor. You won't go and punch someone. But you'll probably return the punch if someone punches you. So it's the same thing as sea creatures as well. So generally, if you approach with uh with respect, you know, you you don't boom the whole of the coral reef or you know, it's fine. They 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 will just go about so far. Buoyancy is key. Lah. You really just slowly, slowly, slowly go and buoyancy is very important. Yeah. Uh, any other questions? Let's see. Mm. Hi, Melanie. Hi. Uh, just highlighting a question that Roy asked in the chat. She, hmm. uh, he asked, uh, what macro creator do you want to get a picture of most when you go back to Tioman? And then uh, I've got another question on top of that. If you ever go back to Tioman together, if Roy and I go to look for snakes and spiders, would you be keen on following us? Sure. <laughs> sure. No, Steve, I told uh Steve, I told I told Roy this a million times. Actually, I want to join your walks. Uh, but it's just because when MCO opens, we get so busy and yeah. our work is usually on the weekends also. So it's just just unfortunate timing. But when everything settles, when the revenge uh holiday settles, <laughs> I'll definitely go for your your macro walk. Uh, that's it. Okay. Uh, the creatures that I really want to see, it's just so many la. It's really 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 just so many. And and I think for me, I generally go without expectations. Like uh, and that's the best thing uh. Sometimes you know, like some dive masters stuff you like show you, hey, this is it. Okay, so you see, and and and. That's the most exciting part, I think, because you don't know what to expect. You have no expectations. So uh, that's a very good uh, mindset to go with. I think with any diving trips, big or small, go with no expectations. Uh, there are times like even for me, I went Bali. I really wanted to see the Mola Mola. Uh, and I, we tried so many dive and Bali dive is so freaking cold. It's like 15 Celsius of water, you know. I wear like, damn a lot of layers you know it's still freezing cold and i did so many dives i still don't see so it is uh again like i say that that's the beauty of diving also first it's nature right so i guess the next time if i do see a mola mola the impact of the mola mola would be even bigger because so much effort to see it, you know yeah yeah no i think i think what you say is true because i i mean um my experience in diving is, you know, like uh, many, many years ago. But what I enjoyed most is, you know, when you get your buoyancy right and just floating in there and this sense of weightlessness, it's almost a meditative experience, you know. And you just see, you know, things just going by and, you know, like, uh, I, 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 think, I think if you had to go there with this anticipation that you're going to hunt and chase something down, I think the experience would be very different. I think it's, it's, Nice in two ways. Uh. I think if you if you have an expectation, for like for example, Komodo, right? Yeah. Komodo is known for its strong currents. And mm. I always advise people gain more experience first before you go Komodo because mm. you will not enjoy it. Mm. Uh, because you'll be scared, you know, you'll be worried for yourself and whatnot. But if you're a little bit more comfortable, then you go for it, then you actually enjoy it. There mm. is this dive site that is called the the slingshot or the 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 gunshot or something like that. Along those lines, I think it's a slingshot. It is really like it's actually a it's like a cavern. It's like a it's like a bowl basically. It's just like that, right? So the shape mm. of the the topography of the dive site is like that. Because of that, there's a very strong current of um uh, uh there's a very strong stream of current that mm. sucks you in and it's really fast. And oh, wow. if like I say, if you're comfortable, you will enjoy it because it's super fun. It's really, really, really fun. It's like riding a roller coaster, you know. But like I say, if you're not comfortable, then the other side of the feeling lah, you will feel very scared and very uncomfortable mm. yeah so like you said you know if you go with expectations like if you already know that dive set is like that then you would if you know your comfortable one you will have that in your mind and that will add on to your experience like a roller coaster you really want to ride this roller coaster that will add on to your experience but at the same time some certain things like if you go with no expectation that will also add on to your experience so really how you how you focus your mindset lah, I guess yeah, at the end of the day, really just enjoy, uh, like you said, 
scuba diving is really meditative. A lot of people think it's an extreme sport. If not, for me, I think it is like a very meditative spot. Like you don't hear anyone talking. All you hear is your bubbles and, and the ocean, you know, and that's it. And uh, camaraderie is another thing. I think generally a lot of uh, divers are very mm. uh, chill, uh, very open, you know. So that's also another thing that adds on to your diving experience, your dive trips. Uh, and of course, then photography, if you're a photographer, you know, that is like a cherry on top of everything, uh you know mm-hmm. yeah yeah and and whatever photos that you after your dive right you go through like Roy Roy I tell you if you go on a dive trip with him he's always on his iPad you know once after the dive he'll be on his iPad he'll be looking through his photos you know and he starts editing it as well so uh, it's the whole experience really really the whole experience so <laughs> yeah so if you guys have a chance you know next year probably can't go anywhere put the money into diving and you can find us <laughs> We are Flow Dive Center. We are in PJ. <laughs> Great. So I think if I go diving, I cannot dive with I cannot dive with a Roy as my buddy. That's too competitive. <laughs> <laughs> but that adds to the fun of it, though. I think that's yeah, yeah, yeah. Fun I'm also. just joking. I'm just joking. <laughs> you know. I mean, another reason why like diving is meditative is you have to be very mindful of your breathing. Eh? Mm. Because that, that defines your buoyancy as well as the amount of oxygen you're going to consume yeah? correct, over, correct. over your time. Yeah? And and I think that's, you know, like uh, mindfulness over your breath is actually a very like fundamental correct. like practice in uh, meditation. Yeah? You, you'll be surprised, huh? a lot of my students, huh? uh, <laughs> they have to relearn le- uh, breathing. Yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. They really like how to breathe. Huh? I'm like, uh, <laughs> really have to relearn breathing because it's such a, normal thing that you don't think about you just breathe so when you are underwater you need to start relearning actually how to breathe and you become more mindful of your breathing yeah yeah you know why i I remember that so well because i when i went diving i I dived with a very excitable lady yeah right so (laughs) every time after diving yeah uh, she'll finish the oxygen and then I have to give her my oxygen and we end up having to surface together. Eh? So 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 it's sort of like then then you know like you know when you choose a dive dive partner eh, buddy you have to make sure that they are compatible in terms of your 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 nature and your characteristic. Wow, Rita, very good, Rita. Yeah. So you know, Rita got very right good air consumption. and everyone stick to it. <laughs> Not, but you won't want to dive with me now because I will slow you down. Definitely. <laughs> Taking photos. Ah. Taking photos. Ah. Mm. But, but, but yeah, I think um, there's just so many facets to it. Uh, camaraderie, you know, nature, really enjoying it. Lah. Yeah. And oh yeah, one more thing you said, like, it feels weightless, right? So fun fact is that uh, diving uh, mm. is actually the closest thing that you can feel to being over, uh, in outer space. Mm. Yeah, uh, in fact, back in the day when they don't have proper uh, training tools and all, those astronauts actually train uh, being z- in zero gravity uh, with diving back mm. in the day. Lah. Now, of but, course, they have. But there's one side effect to diving, you know? <laughs> you know what's the side effect? Everybody I dive with, they were all smokers and drinkers. Every one of them. <laughs> so I think it's something that's common among divers, you know? Drinking, yes, lah. Drinking for sure. <laughs> we we dive like a fish. We drink like a fish, also. Yes. So I guess that 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 aspect of diving hasn't changed, you know. I've not done it. I've done. I haven't done that for over like you know probably thirty years now. But you know, sounds like it. You know, some things don't change. Eh? Uh, all right, Let's Melanie. I really enjoyed your sharing very much. You know the fact that um. I uh, know you, you are very passionate, you know your stuff very well, you know, and I think your presentation really, you know, gives us a very good overall dive experience, you know, because your photos mm-hmm. are, are, are quite, you, you have quite a good collection of photos, some wide, you've got some, you know, like, uh, short, you know, macro shots, and you have cut collection of everything, and you seem to have a story for everything that you shoot. Né? So I think that 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 is actually very uh, good né? as a photographer that you can actually uh, present your photos, narrate your photos as well as tell a story that's compelling, you know, uh, and I, I really appreciate, you know, your sharing tonight, Melanie. Uh, 
Thank you. Thank you so much for coming. Uh, I hope I, I imparted some uh, information. Uh, at least it's, uh, if not, then it's just entertainment, uh, you know. <laughs> now you, you no. find John, John told my John told oh, my even want to go like uh, diving now. Eh? <laughs> but John yeah. told cannot make coffee underwater, so so not your <laughs> not your gig. Eh? <laughs> no, when we surface, John told make coffee. Oh, your dad, he cannot dive, lah. No. <laughs> Why well, a special barista must bring him on all, all my trips today. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. John To is actually our our aged tea and uh, and uh, coffee like uh, expert. Wow. That, and we we still have yet to try his coffee because you know he's presented to us only during the MCO period. Uh, but oh. once MCO is period, then we're definitely going to look him out. Now. <laughs> Can we bring him on dive trips? <laughs> yeah. uh, all right. Any other questions? I really want to take up diving one day. Yeah, one mm. day. Come, come, yeah. come. Look, oh, I'll be ready for you. Hey John, it's not far. You know, like uh, Melanie is just at, you know, the old NW. Eh? You know? Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. So, so, oh, yeah. you know, like uh, it's actually Shabbos very. Club. Very, uh, yes. Oh, okay. Yes. Yeah, yeah. Yes. It's actually yes. very accessible, you know. So you know you can go there, go on Saturday, go walk around and look at like vintage lenses at Mcott Mall. Come over, have your Coney dog, and then walk over to look for Melanie. Yeah, you know, and sign up for uh, open water, you know, photography course. Ah. Uh. Uh, okay. We we got photography course, uh, photography gear, everything. Uh, we are gonna have workshops or so. That's why we are gonna work with Han and even Mohan. Uh. I, I probably some of you guys know him. Uh, we're gonna work with a handful of people. Uh, we actually supposed to do it before MCO one hits, and then that's right. Course, that's right. Almost you know, <laughs> everything <laughs> just got postponed, lah. So that's right. so so we will definitely look into doing something, lah. Yeah. And I was just talking with that also. You know, maybe do something with all you guys. Uh, that are really photographers, <laughs> you know. Uh, that wants to try diving also, you know, instead of diving first, then photography, now this one is photography, then diving. Uh, also can, you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Melody, you have to queue, you have to, the, our bucket is getting bigger and bigger, you know? You, you know? <laughs> you know? <laughs> uh, uh, don't worry, my, we my have... My wallet becomes smaller and smaller, you know? <laughs> <laughs> uh, Melody, thank you for sharing.